with my make studio and welcome today you guys we're going to the beach do you like my glasses do they look beach ready i feel like i look beach ready i like them but we're going to be making the beach cake today so if your my make studio kit does not have this sticker on here that says beach cake kit you're probably looking for another video so go ahead and head back to our youtube channel and find the video that's titled the same as whatever sticker is on your kit if it is here for the beach cake kit Welcome! There's just a couple things we gotta go over before we actually start the decorating part of this. So, number one, your cake. Your cake needs to be baked and either at least room temperature or chilled. Cakes are just a lot easier to work with the colder they are. And whenever you try and put icing on a warm dessert, especially cakes and cupcakes, it turns into a hot soupy goopy mess, which is still delicious. But design wise, we're not going for a hot soupy goopy mess today. We're going for an awesome day at the beach vibe. So you want your cake either room temperature or chilled just so it's a little bit easier to work with. And then don't worry if you don't have a cake pan because inside our Mimey Studio kits, there is a cake pan in there. So you can bake your cake right in this. The cake mix is right here. If you're unsure on how to bake it, no worries. There are directions on the box. If you would like to check those out or if you have any trouble while baking your cake mix, we also have a live chat option that you can totally use. So get your cakes baked and all that jazz. And then aside from that, you will need a pair of handy dandy scissors just to cut some little fun goodie bags and stuff open. And then I always recommend having some kind of towel like a paper towel or a hand towel, just something to put our open icings on and to keep everything as clean as we possibly can throughout this process. And don't worry about having a cake spatula or a spoon because inside our kit, there is also a spatula. So we'll be using this guy today and it's green. Oh, oh I wish my hair was still green. It's the exact same shade. We could have matched, we could have matched, but that's all right. I got the blue, the blue waves for the ocean today. I'm ready. So bake your cakes, get all your stuff. And then final thing, wash your hands super duper good and all that jazz. And then we can get right to it. So I'm just gonna pull everything out of my box and set up, yeah. <gasps> Magic! Alrighty, so for me personally, for this kit, I just leave the cake in the pan. If you would like to take it out of the pan and put it on a plate instead, totally up to you, it's your cake. Do whatever's gonna make you happy with it. Cause at the end of the day, you're the one eating it. But I am just going to leave mine in the pan because I think decorating it right in here looks super cute. And then it's an easy way to transport it. Like maybe you're having a pool party. This would be an awesome cake for a pool party. But let's get to it. So for our beach, we've got two main parts here. We need water and our sandy beach part. So pick which one you want to be your sandy beach part. I recommend doing a little over halfway of your cake. So instead of splitting it right down the middle, just like a, another little, uh, just a, a baby uh, to where it's like this, to where three fourths of our cake is the beach. And then I'm going to take my white icing and then we do want to save this lid because our lid is actually more than a lid this time. I actually think this is so freaking cool. Like, you guys, the coupler ring is the lid. So I took it off and then I'm just going to go. Boop. And this is how we'll attach our tips to our icings later. So we don't want to throw this away. We're just going to set it aside. Set it aside. Aside. All righty. Now I'm going to take the seal off. And we don't need to put a tip on for this part. But we do want to save... Um, at least a fourth of our icing, so about this much. We'll only need this much more for the decorating part after this. So just keep that in mind while you're doing this. You don't need a ton of icing for this part. It's more of a glue for what our sand is going to be today. So I like to make a line where they're gonna stop. So almost halfway, but not quite. And then I'm just going to either put some more lines or polka dots or ziggy zaggies it's really up to you, whatever feels right, to put icing on this side. Again, you don't have to cover it all up. I'll show, it'll make sense. If you want to like chill for a second and see what I'm doing and then decide how you're going to go about this, that's totally okay and way to plan ahead. And if you're like, no, I know what I'm doing and I'm just going for it, go you. 
I'm excited to see what you do. I'm excited to see what both of you, what both options do, honestly. I'm gonna stop talking and do this now. So, boop, 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 boop. Yes. And remember, we wanna save a fourth of it. So when your icing starts to get hard to like squeeze out, treat this like a tube of toothpaste. So I'm gonna mush it and then just fold it down that way it helps put that pressure back into my icing. And I actually think this is enough. So I, folding it down, have a little over, little, like pretty much like my cake. Like it's not quite halfway, but it's, it's like a, like a, this is probably more than I'll need for the next part, but I always think it's good to have just a little bit extra, just in case you might accidentally stick your elbow in it and need to redo a part. I'm very guilty of that. I'm going to be very conscious of doing that today for you guys. So I've got about this much icing left. Um, it's a little more than I need, but I always recommend like just having a little bit extra because you don't know, you might like accidentally stick your elbow in it and need to, to redecorate something. So having a little bit more than you need for the last part is not a bad thing. If you just have exactly what we need, that's also not a bad thing. Just have some white icing left because we'll need to have some wavy effects and stuff going on. It's going to be cool. But now I'm going to set this down and go to my spatula that was in my box. And I went ahead and opened it up. And then there's not really a right or wrong way to do this. I'd say the, probably the only wrong way to do this is to just your cake. We don't want to, we don't want to beat our cake up. <laughs> like, we're, it's a beautiful, it's going to be a beautiful cake and we're making it a pretty piece of art. So we don't want to just like smash it. What I like to do is I like to use this part of my spatula and go side to side. But when I go side to side to smooth things out or cover something, instead of it being like a windshield wiper blade, it's more like the beginning of a pirate ship ride. So I rock a little bit up and I rock a little bit back. So here's a sideways view. Like that. So I go a little back and forth and I just start on one side and do that. Yes. Now don't worry. Oh, I'm glad this is happening. So see how there's crumbs right here? Don't worry about that. This is going to be completely covered up. So don't worry about it. If that doesn't feel good to you for smoothing it out, another way you can do it is treat your cake like it's a really nervous cat. Like you've been trying to get its attention all day. It's finally jumped in your lap. You have to pet it, but you don't want to freak it out very lightly pet your icing in the direction you would like it to go. And again, this does not have to be super duper smooth or perfect because we are going to be covering all of it up. This is mainly glue for our sand. So if you have a couple gaps in this part, it's going to be just fine. And I actually think this is good. Like we got a little bit on the edges and then we don't really need this again. So I'm just gonna set it right there. But like I'm missing a few parts right here, but that's okay. So now we're gonna get our baggie right here and we're gonna get our sand. And don't worry, I did not put sand in your kit. It's not real sand, it's graham cracker, which if you have not had graham cracker crumbles, cake and icing together before, like, oh, oh, I really like it. That's just me though. I think it tastes good. I really like graham cracker crumbles on cakes. But I'm just gonna cut this open with my scissors. I'm not gonna leave everything else in the bag right now, just so I know where it is. And then take out the graham cracker crumbles. So if you wanna pour this in a little bowl or a plate, you can. But what I'm gonna do, plus it saves me some cleanup at the end, it's less dishes I have to do, is I'm gonna pick one end of it and I'm just gonna cut this corner off. Ah. Oh, oops. <laughs> and then instead of just sand everywhere, I'm gonna get my jazz hand going. All the single ladies. Yes, and I'm just kind of going in a square around it. I'm also using it to fill in these gaps here, where my pan is, like where these little creases are. But I wanna make sure that I get the top of my cake first. 
So I've got a pretty good pile going on right here. I still have some extra graham cracker. I'm gonna set this aside right now. And then my hands are nice and clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not putting as much pressure as I can. It's another one of those very light petting the nervous cat amounts of pressure to just kind of pat my sand down on the icing to help it stick and also move it around so it does get into those gaps in my pan. And then you can still see some of this top white line I've got right here, but that's okay because I'm going to put water and stuff there. So if you have a little bit of icing peeking out, it's it's totally fine. Um, don't don't stress about it. Like you have to cover up every bit. Focus more on this versus the part where it's going to connect to your water. Ready. And then I'm going to go ahead and just pour some more right here just to fill in that gap. And I'll save this just in case, but you can go ahead and dump it all on there if you want. Yes, 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 it's already cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, now I'm just gonna give it a little after I've moved it around, again, to just kind of reinforce that this is going to stick to the cake part. Plus, I think when you use your fingers, it makes these little impressions um, and it kind of looks like your sand has been walked and traveled on, like like the sand right at the beach would be especially a very popular spot. So it's a cool little realism effect. I like it. I feel like it helps bring it together. Alrighty. So we look like this. I can't do this, but I can do this. And now we are going to grab our blue icing, but we're going to go ahead and put a tip on it. It's time for the water. So blue, take the thing off, boop, the little hole, take off the seal, and then there's gonna be a next step. So back to our baggie of goodies, our little bag of fun as I like to call it. We're gonna take out the one that has all the tips. These, these plastic looking things. Cut it open. And we're going to take out the one that looks like a spiky circle. It is an open star tip. It looks like this. And how we stick that on our blue icing is we're gonna put it like this and then take that lid that we popped the little thing out of and just screw it on there. Now, sometimes the tips kind of like, they shift a little bit when you go to put the ring on. So if they're shifting, you might need to like move it around a little and put a little pressure when you twist it on. But otherwise, it should be like this. And then it doesn't need to be on so tight that you can't take it off. It just needs to be on tight enough. If you do this, it doesn't go flying across the room. So we're all good to go. Now I'm gonna show you a couple different ways you can put water on. I personally like to hold mine sideways and do lines or a jab. But if you would wanna do poofs, you can. So I'm actually going to grab something for you so you can see the different styles you could go with. I recommend not trying them yet. See what your options are and then see which one you like best and then go for it. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I want you to be able to see. So one way you can do it is hold it straight up and down. You don't want to push it right into your cake. You want to hold it a little bit above and then squeeze one, two, stop and lift for some cute little poofies. You could also add a slight wrist twist in there like you're flicking a wand. So wrist twist. Very ha, ah, not ha ah, for some vibes. And then the way I like to do it is hold it sideways. And you can either just pipe lines. You could make them zigzags if you want to add a little bit more movement to your water. Or what I like to do is the jab. I'm sure there's a way more professional term for it, but that's how I remember it. It's like you're poking somebody with your icing, like, hey, 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 hey. So while I'm squeezing, poke, 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 poke. So those are your options, or at least there's some of them that you could put on this side of your cake. So pick out which one feels right for you and go ahead and cover this whole side in blue and don't worry about the graham cracker. I honestly recommend starting here and working your way up towards the graham cracker. We'll go over more of what's going on there once we get to that point. 
And just like with my graham cracker, I'm coming all the way to the edge. So I'm hiding this gap that's going on. And then for our blue icing, we will need like this much. So even if you use everything in here and you still have a little bit in this tip at the end, that will be enough. We just you literally need like that much blue icing for something else. Just something to be aware of. Ta -da! So when you were using your blue icing, if you didn't quite make it to your sand, you can also then slide your sand to meet your blue icing. That's a good workaround. Just because people use different amounts of squeezing pressures when we make things. So if you're really heavy handed and like thick, thick, thick icing and you didn't quite make it, there's an easy workaround. Just go ahead and shove your sand just into that, into your blue. Yes. And then as you see, I've still got my white line from earlier, but this is actually really helpful because right now it's cute, but it can have a little bit more spizzazz to it. I want to add the crashing waves on the sand. I guess not crashing, but when I think crashing, I think not, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go back to my white icing and I'm going to go back to these. And we're actually going to use my all-time favorite tip, the grass tip. But we're not making grass today. We're going to use it for the movement of our water today. This is, for real, my all-time favorite one. It is the one with all the little holes in it. It looks like a thimble. This tip is awesome. So I'm going to put it on my white. So I'm going to find the thingy. Oh, yep. See, this one I got to twist a little. There we go. And then I'm going to need like this much for a part after this, but it'll still be the same amount of icing I told you to save. <laughs> so right on top of my blue line, let me come up, let me come at you. Right here, I'm going to put little poofs, but they need to be on top of your blue line or at least halfway on them. The reason they need to be on the icing is because, well, I can show you. Icing does not like to stick to graham cracker crumble. Instead, it just rips up your crumbles. So if you try to go directly on your sand, it's just going to keep lifting up on you and you're just gonna end up wasting icing. We need it to be a little bit on our blue icing to actually stick to it and not lift up. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm gonna hold it a little above, very similar to the first two ways I showed you guys how to use that open star tip. But I'm going to do a one, two. And the most important thing with this tip is a lot of people have the tendency to make their design and then dip back into it and lift up. You don't want to dip back into it because this one has so many little holes. It'll completely make it one blob and you won't have the definition anymore. So you need to do a stop and lift straight up. Yeah. And it's like a what, like a, like a one or a one two is how long I'm squeezing. And I like when my lines aren't super even because I feel like it gives my cake more, more movement as far as like an art perspective goes. <laughs> because to me, cakes and cupcakes are just art that you can eat and art is unique just like you are. So even though we have all these kits and we're all like doing the same thing together. You guys always like, everyone puts their own spin on it and I love seeing what you guys do. It's so, it's so cool. I'm, I'm so happy I can help you be creative and also be creative with something you can then later eat. It's freaking awesome. All right, and I saved about enough for like maybe five more poofs, which is perfect. There we go, so now it's crashing. Uh, yes. Oh my gosh, we're already like, we're like halfway there, you guys. This is great. So, hmm. I think we'll go ahead and make our shark fin. Gotta have a shark. I personally want a shark. So, I'm gonna take my white fondant. If you never played with fondant before, it's basically like Play-Doh you can eat. But I'm gonna be using the white fondant for a few different things. So I'm actually gonna cut this into several different pieces 
just so I remember that I'm using it for other things. So let me go ahead and, and I just cut the top off and then I take my scissors and cut down the middle. She says that she can't get the scissors to work. So I cut the top off and then I cut right down the middle so I can just do, 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 and unwrap it like a candy bar. That way it stays this way. It's easier for my brain to remember what to portion when it remains in a rectangle. However, if you cut it open and it comes out in blobs or chunks, it's gonna be just fine. It's totally okay if it's not out like this. And then make sure you don't have any icing on your hands. If you have a little bit of blue icing on your hands for this part, that is okay. But especially after this part, you don't want any icing on there because it's going to stain your fondant. But we actually want our fondant to be stained for this first bit. So this is going to be my shark fin. Sharks are for real, like one of my favorite things ever. So there has to be a shark. There's got to be a shark in the water. For me, if you don't want to put a shark fin in the water and if you want to say, Make an inner tube instead. Make a tube snake and then connect it. And you can put it on there, you can add stripes. Like you don't have to do a shark fin. You can be as creative and as detailed with this as you want to be. But shark fin for me. And then what else we got? A uh, beach ball. So this is gonna be my beach ball. And then my blankets. And then I wanna tie dye some of this later. And then I'm just going to save this one for a maybe. Like in case I decide I want something a little bit bigger, I'm going to set this part aside. So I basically cut it into five chunks, if that helps. I'm very visual. So this is the sizes that I cut. I'm going to set everything aside except the one I want for my fin. And then this is where that last little blue came. So I actually don't need to take it out of my tip because I did these demo ones for you earlier. So I'm just going to take one single poof of icing. If it's in your tip, take your tip off and just bit and squeeze it out onto your fondant. And then we're going to mush it up. So when I say mush it up, if you just go like nothing happened, you've actually got to mush it and twist it to get this color change going on. Oh, yes. And if you like it kind of tie-dye like this, you can totally leave it like this. You could even make a mermaid tail coming out of the water if you wanted. Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So to make a shark fin, all I'm going to do is roll it into a ball because whenever we're shaping anything, I think it is easiest if you start from a ball. And then I'm going to take my pinch of fingers and pinch one end of it so it kind of looks like a weird teardrop right now. <laughs> I'm ready to eat my cake. And then I'm going to boop it. I'm not going to like mosquito squash it, but I am going to flatten it just a little bit. Just boop, make it a little wider. And then I'm going to use my table and smush that down. And then I like it to be a little curved because I like, I like cartoony things, you guys. So I feel like giving it the curve kind of makes it like a cartoon shark that's just like, hey, what's up guys? A beach day? So I'm just going to drag this out and turn it just a little to where it's more like a Hershey kiss going on. Now, if that was super complicated and you're like, I hated that, I, what? If you mess up, the best part about fondant is you can just squish it and reshape it. It's a lot like Play-Doh like that. You can also, if shaping it was too hard, flatten it out. And then you can use your scissors to cut out the shape that you want. That is another option to get the same thing. Let me remake my shark fin. Yes. Perfect. So now I'm going to decide where I want it on my cake. I personally like it in the corner over here. I just, that's just what I like. You can put it wherever you want in the water. And I'm going to put it right here. Oh, yes. And then it kind of looks like it's just like sitting on top of the cake. I want it to look like the fin is coming like dun -dun 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 out of the water. 
So I'm gonna go back to my white and that's why I saved a little bit so I can just do a ring of poofs around my shark to look like it has broken the surface, like it has just risen up, just to help give my cake some more movement. Yes, look at it. Oh, that was so cool. So I still have a little bit of white left. If you don't have any white left, you're all good. If you do have a little bit left, you can go ahead and add some more to your waves if you'd like, or save it for at the end where you're like, you know what, I really wanna add, I really wanna add something else coming out of the water. You can totally just save it if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more on my waves just to make them look a bit more foamy. Yes! Okay, 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 okay. So now it is time for our beach scene decorations. So I want to start with, oh, what do I want to start with? I think I want to start with my blanket. So for me personally, I like to use about this much white icing for a blanket. However, you also have orange fondant. And if you would rather have an orange blanket, you can do that instead too. Or you can put a dot of red icing on this and make it a pink blanket. You got options, but I'm just gonna leave it like this. And then I've got no blue on my hands, we're all good. And then I'm gonna mush it. The reason I'm mushing it right now is because when our fondant has been in the air for a little bit, air makes fondant start to stiffen up. So this will help make it soft and easier to work with again. So boo -boo 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 -boo. Okay, I'm gonna roll it into a ball. And then this time I'm gonna tube snake it, just like Play-Doh, but I'm not gonna like make it a really long snake. I'm keeping it more of a thick snake. So, bop, 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 bop. And then I'm gonna flatten it. And this time I really am. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna take my scissors. And I want this a little long. So I'm using my fingers to kind of lightly pinch it up. When in doubt, pinch it up. Pinch it. Yeah. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm going to cut a rectangle shape this way. If you have a rectangle cookie cutter at home, or if you're really good at freehand shaping it, awesome. But I like to flatten it out kind of weird and then make a scissor. Plus, I don't mind if this is a little cattywampus because like beach towels and beach blankets, like they tend to kind of, like they're, they don't ever look like perfectly straight in my opinion. And then I'm gonna put that right on my sand right here. Now, just a heads up, this is not firmly attached. So be careful, don't shake your cake. But if you do want it more attached, just take your finger here. For instance, I'm gonna put my beach ball over here. Take your finger and hollow out where that sand is until you can see the icing again. And that way your fondant will be sitting in the icing for a little extra support. So it won't, it'll be a lot harder for it to move around than if you just set it on top. But I think the blanket's fine. And then I want stripes on my blanket. So I'm going to grab my red icing and I'm going to get the one that's just a circle. It's this one, just a little tiny circle. It's good for drawing, writing, making polka dots. So I'm gonna draw stripes onto my fondant towel right here. So let me take this off. So I'm ready to go with my red and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold it straight up and down and just make some lines. You can make them however thick or thin that you want. Um, if you're gonna make them thick, just double up your lines. Uh, you can go like this or you can go at a diagonal, just whatever vibe you think feels the cutest for your cake. I'm just gonna go straight across. So I actually start on the edge, bring it up onto my fondant, and then end it at the edge. And then, oh, I can already see it. You see this little point? The round tip is notorious for getting little points like that. Don't worry about them right now. If they're driving you crazy, it's okay. We just need our icing to stiffen in the air just a little bit, and then you can lightly go in oh, and tap them and they'll go away. If you try to do it right now, your icing is still too wet. It's just gonna keep sticking to your finger over and over and making new points. Okay. 
And then if you want your towel to have, your towel or your blanket to have some like fringe hanging off of it, that tip that we used for our crashing waves and the water effect going on, the grass one, the one with all the little holes in it, you could put that on your red and add some little fringe poofs to the end of it. It'd be super cute. Just hold it at this angle and then do the one, two and pull this way instead of one, two and pull up. Hope that makes sense. Alrighty. So now I want my beach ball. So again, if you want an orange beach ball, you could do that instead. Or if you want to add a little dot of red icing to this to make your fondant pink, you could do that too. But I'm going to leave it white and I'm going to mush it up. And then I'm going to roll it into a ball. And I'm going to stick it right there because we don't need to worry about the bottom. You're not going to see the bottom at all. And it's really hard to try and decorate all of a ball of fondant. So just worry about the parts you can see. And then with this one, you can make stripes again. Or how I'm feeling today is I'm going to make polka dots. So I'm just going to add some little polka dots. And again, I'm just ignoring those points for right now. I will come and deal with them later. Yes! Oh my gosh, it's looking so cute. We're almost done. Okay, 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 okay. okay. What do we want to do now? What do I want? I know what I want to do. So I want to make a crown because it's awesome. And I want to make like a hermit crown. So I'm going to leave this on. And where do I want? I want my crab. Ooh. I think I want my crab right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that icing trick where I'm just parting some of my sand. So where I put the hole, I'm just going to squeeze in the same spot with my red and I'm kind of like twirling it a little. That's just habit for me. You don't have to be twirling it like I am. But I want it to be about the size of my hole. Perfect. Like this. Yes. And then I'm going to add two little one, two, three, stop and pull to make little eggs. Ta-da! Now I'm going to go to my orange fondant. And if you want, you can make other things with this orange fondant too. Like you can make a pair of flip flops. You have options. There's lots of options. But I want oh, just some for my shell. And I want a spiral hermit crab shell. So my crab's about this big. So I only need about this much orange fondant. I'm going to mush it up, play with it with my hands roll it into a ball, and then I'm going to tube sneak it, but I'm going to need a long tube sneak it. Which I do think it is easier to do on the table, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. I think that's long enough. And then I'm going to take an end, wrap it on top. Like that. And I'm just going to straighten it out just a little and then hold it up to my crab. So I feel like that's a little too big, just a, just a hair. So I'm just gonna unravel some of the bottom, take it off. And then I like to put it on kind of cattywampus. So it's actually sticking to our icing, but it's leaning into the cake. So it's not gonna go anywhere. Yes. And then I'm going to take some of my white fondant and I'm going to make two little tiny circles and a tiny smiley face for my crab. That's just how I'm feeling and what I want to do. You can leave it just like this if you want. It's super cute either way. Or maybe your crab is like, yay, beach day. Just however your crab's feeling. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So for me personally, I'm just going to add two more things to this cake. But... I'm going to have some leftover fondant going on and all that jazz and some leftover icing. So feel free to get more creative with it if you would like to. But I think I'm just going to do two more things. And I want a seashell and a starfish. So I'm going to start with my starfish, actually. So I'm going to take about this much orange fondant, roll it into a ball. 
And then I'm going to shape a star. So you can either use your fingers to pinch and shape a star. You can do the whole flatten it out thing and then cut out the shape. If you have a tiny star cookie cutter at home, you can also use that. Just whatever way works for you. I, I don't know. I'm usually a pincher, so I'm going to try pinching. And then I'm just going to flatten my pinches just a little. But whatever way is easiest for you to get a star shape. Everybody's brains work differently, so don't feel like it has to be exactly like I'm doing things. We're all different. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And you can just leave it like this and put it on the cake. But I want more realism. So I'm actually going to take my umbrella. Yeah, I know. I was obsessed with these things when I was younger. My grandma had a whole bag of them and I would like stick them in my hair. I used to have hair all the way down to my butt. I know, it's crazy. It wasn't blue either. But I'm going to take this and I'm not going to stab it all the way through, but I am going to poke my starfish with it to give it texture and just a little bit more realism. So I'm going to go all the way over and just do, 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 do. So I'm not sticking it through the fondant, but I'm sticking it in enough that I can feel, ah, oh, yes, this is, this is hitting fondant. Ta-da! And then I'm going to put it over here. Ooh, I made a really big starfish. I like it, though. All right. I want to add a seashell. So I want a tie-dye seashell. So I'm going to take some white. It's probably more than I need, but... Oh, go ahead. Okay, fine. Fine. Take some white, and then equal parts of orange. We're going to mush them together. And then when they're all sandwiched, we're gonna twist them and then mush them just a little bit because I don't wanna completely create a new color, but I want the swirl. So keep doing that until you're like, oh yes, this looks good, which is where I'm at already. Like, yes, this is what I want. <laughs> and then if you would like, you can look up pictures of a seashell to make exactly what you want. I'm going with your standard like curvy round one with the little points on the side. That's what I'm going for. But you can look up different pictures of seashells. You could even do a tie-dye spiral seashell like we did our hermit crab shell. But I'm going to boop it. Boop. And then I'm going to pinch the end. And then I'm going to take my toothpick again. You could also use a pair of scissors or butter knife if you have that. But I'm going to lay it flat to make those impression lines. Yeah on my seashell just for a little extra oomph oh yes I like that and then I am going to pinch the end just a little and I'm going to stick it over here by the water yes and then the final thing you guys that I'm going to do oh 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 Oh, I almost forgot about those points. I'm glad I looked down. So it's definitely been long enough now that, let me hold them up to you. Lightly, see very lightly tap them and they go away. Which if the points don't bother you, you can leave them there. Don't feel like you have to get rid of them. If you're like, no, but Miss Chayla, I like them. Then okay, it's your cake. How would you like on there? I just, I don't know why the points bother me when I make things. So I, I need them to not be pointy. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now for realsies, the last thing is the umbrella. So I'm going to take that off. And then I like to fan out the end just a little bit. I'm not like, like ripping it, just fanning it out a little. And then when I can see this little piece and get my fingers in there, I push it up and then push this pink ring up to meet it. I just feel like that's a little bit easier of a way to open it. And I'm going to stick it. I like to go at an angle because I think it looks cute that way. But you can stick it however you want. You can put it right here. I like mine by the blanket because I like to think that whoever's at the beach would just be like, oh. Or in the water with the shark because sharks are cool. Be safe. Don't actually don't don't go swimming with sharks in an unsafe manner. Like go with professionals. Just want to clarify that. But there we go, you guys. It's a beach day. Oh, you know, just another beautiful sunny day. 
here at the Beach Cake. <laughs> I'm not funny, but <laughs> thank you guys. I hope you had fun making your beach cakes and I hope that you enjoy them and also, well, enjoy eating them because that's like the next best part. And also, if you would like to send us your beautiful creations, I am always down to see what you guys do. Like, the creativity of all of this is, is so important to me, and I love that we're able to do this together. So if you would like to send us your pictures and become part of our baking club, you totally can, and you might get a cool surprise out of it. But if you're like, no, no, you can't see it, no. That's okay, it's your cake, there's no pressure. You don't have to if you don't want to. But if you would like to share, you're totally welcome to. I love seeing what you guys do. And this is it, I hope you had fun. I hope you learned some things. If you would like to see what other kits we have, because we also do round cakes and cupcakes, you can check out our website, which is mymakestudio.com. You can also check out our Facebook, which is mymakestudio, and our Instagram, which is at my make studio if you just kind of want to see like what's going on new and upcoming things and if you didn't know I'm based in Colorado so in case you want to know what's going on in our life that's a good place to check out and another thing that we have because you know it is the it thing right now is we also have a TikTok which is at my make studio and our TikTok is more of kind of like if you want to see what me and my dog are up to or random little silly side projects you can totally go there as well but Thank you guys so much for coming today. I hope you had a great time. I really do hope you enjoy eating your beautiful beach cakes. And as always, stay creative.